Thank you, Sanjina. I'm Dr. Mary. It's not cute to be called Jennifer. <laughs> okay. Um, today, I was given a task of uh, talking about emerging trend of adenocarcinoma of cervix. I was, when I was given this topic, I was thinking, what is it so emerging about it? And what is it so trendy, trendy about adenocarcinoma? Okay. Alright, for this topic, I will go into a few factors. That is, we talk about epidemiology first. How is it so trendy about the prognostic factor and the differences in survival for adenocarcinoma? Patterns of dissemination and recurrences. And how does the response of treatment from randomized trials and also response of chemotherapy? I hope this is trendy enough. So the epidemiology is, is very alarming actually to say it is sure that is, is, there is an increase of incidence of adenocarcinoma. Last time in, in 1970s, we used to say, oh it's very good, the proportion of SEC to adenocarcinoma is 88% to 12 but now we say it's a quarter of it is adenocarcinoma. So there is an increased incidence relatively. So that is for certain. More alarming things is, is there any true incidence increase in absolute frequency for adenocarcinoma? Thanks to the cervical screening, we have improved so much for our SEC, squamous cell, but for adenocarcinoma, we are a bit worried. More worrying facts is, is there an increase of adenocarcinoma in young women? Young women less than 35. Okay, so we are very worried. In England, 1971 studies, it says that adenocarcinoma in the old ladies are stable, for but the younger ones are increasing. So we are worried. And this also happens in Australia, New Zealand, Belgium, and many more in Europe countries. So what are the possible reasons for the increase or rise in the incidence? We look into ineffective screening, different risk factors, and HPV types. It is no doubt that adenocarcinoma is more difficult to be picked up from our pap smear because it's obvious reason. 70% of them are actually totally asymptomatic and when we do the examination, we cannot see anything from it. And from the pap smear, especially for us that we are doing only the air spatula work, um, we cannot detect the adenocarcinoma part. And for the cytologies, for the corposcopies, it is still a challenge for us, for glandular cells. How about risk factors? There are differences. In Kessler has studied uh, eight control studies, 167 patients is non SCC and a thousand, a more, nearly 2,000 is non -S for SCCs. They found that parity has a weaker association compared to SCC. We know that multipara is associated with cancer of cervix, right? But for adenocarcinoma, it is not very associated. Obesity has a Stronger association with adenocarcinoma. How about risk factor of smoking? Yeah. So this is a very large study, nearly 13,000 women and 23,000 control studies. There is no association with smoking in um, incidence of AC for the current or the past smokers. In contrast with our squamous cell carcinoma, it is strongly associated. How about receptor? It is very alarming. One, one finding that OCP is actually very much increased in adenocarcinoma. However, there is a very good large systemic review involving more than 12,000 women. It is found out that yes, OCP do have association with invasive carcinoma, but between these two, they are similar. Whether it's SEC or adenocarcinoma, OCP does increase the risk of getting cancers. How about HPV type? We know that from previous lectures, 16 and 18 is popular for our invasive carcinoma. And many we detect 
that HIV accounts for about 50% of adenocarcinoma, but only 15% in squamous, for example. And <coughs> there is many more studies to prove that for adenocarcinoma, HIV-18 is more prevalent. Just now, if I remember the Malaysian study, 18 also more prevalent in adenocarcinoma. However, the latest HPV meta-analysis, the only predominant thing that we know is HPV-16 in SCC, where else for HPV-18 is similar. Okay, this alarming thing about the rise of adenocarcinoma in women younger than 35, they have made a general consensus that it is not because it is increased absolutely, but it is because something happened, something going on with the 1960s that is only a cohort effect because it is sexual habits. So the good news is screening does actually show a pickup rate, good pickup rate nowadays. Thank you to the hard work of many people trying to improve how to see, uh, recognize glandular cells. So because adenocarcinoma is so small in number, we didn't realize it yet. So hopefully in future, we will realize that we will have decrease in incidence of adenocarcinoma. So conclusion is about uh, epidemiology in adenocarcinoma, yes, there is a relative risk increase because good screening technique for our SEC. There is an increased pickup rate by screening, small in number still. Different in risk factors, yes, ethnicity and weaker in parity. And OCP does increase, but in both cell type, HPV 16 for both ACs. What about the prognostic factor? This is a very hard topic, very controversial, because we feel as clinicians, and some studies show that they are worse compared to our, our friend SEC. It's Majority of the studies actually say AC carries worse prognosis, 10 to 12, a 10 to 20 percent difference in five-year overall uh, rates. Studies comparing five-year survival, uh, Hopkins, Eiffel, and Jen they have the largest number uh, of uh, adenocarcinoma in their subset analysis. Look at this stage one for AC only 60 percent and. SEC is 90, same here, there's a drop of 10 to 20 percent of the survival. So it is, for clinicians, this is very worrying. So what are the prognosis? Yes, in cervical cancer, size does matter, especially for adenocarcinoma. If it is less than, if it is less than 2 cm, the prognosis is the same to SEC. The largest data set from IFL, if you have more than 4 cm, the survival from 73 for SEC dropped to 59%. So size does even bigger attribute to a overall survival for uh, adenocarcinoma. They have bigger risk of developing distant metastasis in AC 25% compared to SEC only 14%. If lymph nodes is involved for all cancers in ACC also we are worried, but if there is a lymph node mass in adenocarcinoma, we are more worried. The drop of survival, survival is uh, dropped tremendously. So in this study, it's not just um, AC is higher incidence to have a lymph node metastasis. If you have lymph node metastasis, it's even worse. Proven by uh, IV. In, okay, this is making more controversial issues, that is, in most studies, as you can see, non scc is grouped as AC and adenosquamous. So, is it the AC itself or, it, or the adenosquamous part that is bringing more pro problem? Okay. Finally, let's look at this uh, table. Make a study in adenosquamous, the overall survival is 69. If it is AC, it's 80%. If you mix them together, it's about the same. Same in stage 2. So, meaning to say, maybe what we are seeing 
it is not the adenosquamous, adenocarcinoma, but maybe it is the adenosquamous that is bringing all the name of adenocarcinoma down. But we are not too sure because the numbers are far smaller. How about grading? Only a few studies to show that grading makes a difference. Grade 3, obviously, uh, they have overall survival of only 67% as compared to 85%. So in prognosis, what we can see is difficult to say that they have similar survival. In small tumor, yes, confidently we can say maybe they have similar survival to SEC. But for a bigger tumor, uh, for a lymphose metastasis, we are worried that maybe we are under-treating our adenocarcinoma. How about the patterns of dissemination? I don't really want to quote Shimada at all because this is the largest a uh, study that has been examining ovarian metastasis. They have 3,000 or more surgical treated one stage 1B and 2B and 52, 52 of them have ovarian metastasis. Overall, for SEC, ovarian metastasis is only 0.8. However, for AC, they are 5%. How about failure pattern? There is uh, much more studies to say that the failure pattern is different. The local control is very good. However, the distant metastasis is common, commoner compared to uh, SEC. This demonstrate here. For 1B1, the pattern, failure pattern 6%. For distant, uh, value failure is 15%. And here in stage 1B2, for pelvic failure is 17 And for the distant, is 37%. It is almost double to see that AC adenocarcinoma will have the tendency to have distant metastasis. This famous UG meant to satellite and updated by Rothman. As you can see here, they have treated all the CF1B with, uh, with two risk factors. For RD, is 18% survival for observed 31. If you do a subset analysis of these studies, which unfortunately is only 59, which is rather small, for the RT group, the recurrence is 9 and the observed is 44, meaning much more. So the Giorgio 92 actually suggested that adjuvant RT is particularly more effective if um, given to AC patients. Peters et al., the GOG 109, they did all the radical hysterectomy for stage 1A2, 1B, 2A, and with high risk features that is like positive lymph nodes or positive margins or microscopic parameter innovation. They have this uh, 243 patient and AC only 50, as you can see, it's only small, small numbers. But this is very interesting study because they have observed, they have uh, given RP alone or concurrent chemo RT, but the, chemo, the chemotherapy is different. Two cycles of concurrent cisplatin 5 u then two additional cycles after that. So what happened? If you can see for SCC, 69% for RT only, for AC is 59, it's lower, but if it's given chemotherapy, it's the same. So what I'm seeing here, AC has worse prognosis than SCC, no doubt. However, the difference is appear when a patient receives chemotherapy and RT. So what are we seeing? Patient receiving chemotherapy found higher numbers of chemotherapy. The more chemotherapy boxes you give, the better the overall survival. And the hypothesis is systemic chemotherapy plays a greater importance in AC, possibly because they already have micrometastasis. Lanyon, a famous paper, is also doing about similar, uh, but they have uh, treated stage 1B and 2A, 1 to surgery, but many of the patients actually needed RT as an adjuvant later, and the other arm is radical radiation only. If you look further, overall, the surgical arm is 83% is better, and the RT arm is 74%. Okay. These are the comparison for Lanyoni 
Arti was override overall survival in surgery plus arti improve overall survival for adenocarcinoma. For Sedley's enrollment, arti versus observ observation recurrence is higher in AC versus ACC. And I think this is a very important study that the RT of course worse in AC but gives chemotherapy in addition to RT, it improves similar to SEC. Okay, so it seems that we have to do surgery, it seems that we have to do RT and also chemotherapy. If you are thinking about chemotherapy, which chemotherapy are we talking about? Chemotherapy is usually used in persistent or recurrence disease for CS cervix. So because of the minimal numbers, we can only rely on these two, um, a few studies. GOG179 says that cisplatin on the is very good, 27% uh, improvement. Curtin has used Texor 170, also reported very good uh, survival. It seems that it seems that the use of packing taxel has benefit for our adenocarcinoma, right? For a non SCC, repacted taxel have a higher median survival compared to SCC. Look, uh, 20, 20 months compared to 12 months. So taxel is supposed is seemingly better more effective in treating adenocarcinoma. So in conclusion, small tumors, negative LVSI, survival difference is negligible. We are quite happy about it. But as tumor is getting bigger, advances AC has significantly lower survival rates compared to SEC for their stage. And the incidence of lymph nodes metastasis is higher and the distance relapse is higher in stage 1B1 despite the good control of healthy control. This is raising the questions whether or not we, in order to prevent distant relapse, do we need any systemic adjuvant treatment or not? And if you're thinking about adjuvant systemic treatment, which chemotherapy are we talking about? Yes, taxane is becoming more proven. And remember Peter's study, conventional chemotherapy post concurrent chemoradiation, cisplatin 5 FU is also showing good results. Ladies and gentlemen, the limitation for all these stocks, all the evidence that we have is small numbers. All the Research has been done is so much so in SEC that adenocarcinoma is only a subset analysis. Hence, we have very small number to rely on. We cannot put this in guidelines, but I hope this is can somehow gear us towards how to manage AC much better. Future direction, of course, people have been studying about um, epidermal growth factor and endothelial growth factor, but there is still much more to be done. With that, I thank you.